Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 13th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today, of course, we'll start with Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. And Microsoft had sort of an overall, I would call it average Patch Tuesday with 74 vulnerabilities being patched and 15 critical vulnerabilities. Now, in addition to these patches, we also got two advisories. Advisories are usually notes uh, referring to behavior changes or security issues that don't necessarily result in a patch. Now, the one critical vulnerability that was already exploited in the wild is yet again a scripting engine memory corruption vulnerability. Remember when I talked about the pwn to own contest on Monday, how many of these devices fell due to JavaScript uh, issues? Well, uh, this is yet another one, CVE 2019-1429 has been exploited in the wild. That's allow remote code execution if a user visits a malicious web page. Of course, this makes you question a little bit the wisdom of throwing JavaScript everywhere, given that I don't think there is really a remotely bug-free secure implementation of JavaScript. Now, then we had two vulnerabilities that were already publicly released, but at this point, not yet exploited. One is an Excel issue that affects the click to run system. Apparently what can happen here if a user receives a malicious Excel document, that Excel document could execute code as system. So uh, this is actually in sort of your standard code execution as a normal user and could also be used for privilege escalation on a system. The second one is one of these advisories. It affects the trusted platform module and does not affect directly any of Microsoft's code, which is why Microsoft did not release a patch, just an advisory that you should address this. The trusted platform module, of course, is is something that Microsoft software interacts with for disk encryption and such. And the problem here is an information leakage issue in the elliptic curve DSA algorithm. Now, on the good side, uh, this algorithm is actually not used by Windows so far. So you should be good for now. On the bad side, patching is a little bit tricky here because what you really need to patch is uh, the TPM firmware. Only some manufacturers' uh, TPM chips are affected. Now, Microsoft has a link to an advisory from the manufacturer. However, uh, last time I tried, that link just led me to a page not found error on that particular manufacturer's website. So this will be a little bit tricky uh, to address, uh, but I think you should have some time to really work this out. This is nothing really critical that you need to fix immediately. Now, Adobe released four bulletins today, none of them affecting Adobe Flash. So there is no corresponding Microsoft advisory here. The bulletins affect uh, Adobe Bridge Creative Cloud, Adobe Media Encoder, Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud, and Adobe Animate Creative Cloud. So not really two widely spread applications, more sort of professional content creator applications. And Facebook did fix an interesting issue in its iOS application. Apparently what happened was, and I was not able to reproduce it, so I may already have the updated app on my phone. If you went to your profile and looked at a picture, the ca camera would turn on without any apparent reason. Now, you didn't really notice that the camera turned on if you sort of swipe the application 
up in order to switch applications, you would see a live picture from the camera as a background behind the Facebook app. Now, there's no indication at this point that any images were sent to Facebook, but still one of those problems that of course doesn't really make people feel warm and fuzzy about having a Facebook application running on their phone. And McAfee released a new version for McAfee Total Protection, Antivirus Plus, and McAfee Internet Security, fixing an interesting privilege escalation vulnerability. It's one of those good old DLL loading vulnerabilities where the software looked for a DLL that didn't exist, but if an attacker is now providing that DLL, it will be loaded into the software and then execute code. It should be pretty obvious if you can execute code inside the anti-malware engine, of course, you can essentially turn it off. Uh, but of course, you can then also inherit some of the privileges that the anti-malware engine has and execute code as a system. Pretty interesting, relatively simple to exploit a vulnerability. So uh, please update, even though of course, in order for someone to exploit this issue, they first have to have access to your system. So this would be something an attacker uses to gain persistence and be able to execute additional malicious code that the anti-malware engine would block. Well, and that's it for today. Remember, due to my travel schedule, no podcast tomorrow. If all goes well, then I should have another podcast for you on Friday. Thanks. That's it for today and talk to you again on Friday. Bye.